everybody, this is John for MTG Nexus coming at you with a quick hits video. That is a one-shot gameplay of one of the top tier decks in the format that we have been covered in this month's top five deck lists, and that is Hardened Scales. Now this is a deck that's been around for quite some time, even before the banning of Mox Opal. Um, it was one of the artifact decks of the format that used to be part of the uh, decks that played Ancient Stirrings along with KCI and Original Affinity as well as Tron. Obviously the format's come a long way since then, but this deck has recently gotten a big boost with Agatha's Soul Cauldron, kind of allowing you to play all the activated abilities of creatures from your graveyard, putting them on creatures with plus one plus one counters, in a deck that's already built around plus one plus one counters. Um, as far as that end, you play things like the namesake Hardened Scales, and Zabaz, which help to boost your modular creatures. Um, if a modular trigger ability, put plus one, plus one counter, put additional plus one, plus one counter, and Hardened Scales just basically says, anytime you put one or more plus one, plus one counters, put that many plus one on. And then you also have copies of um, Ozolith, the Shattered Spire, one or more plus one, plus one counters, put that many plus one, plus one, and it has an activated ability to put plus one, plus one counters on it. Beyond that, you have Zabaz, obviously, which is a 1-1 one, one modular that you can use to blow up your own artifacts, much like a poor version of Arcbound Ravager. Patchwork Automaton, which is your most difficult to interact with threat, can grow to immense size. The one downside is it doesn't have a trample. Hangerback Walker uh, comes in with her XX, and then uh, with that many plus one plus one counters, and then whenever it dies, you get that many 1-1 uh, one, one counters, uh, that many 1-1 one, one hanger. Thopter tokens and then walking ballista is kind of your way to kind of chain out the game um, along with ink moth nexus uh, basically this allows you to attack for a boatload of damage and then shoot your opponent's board down or attack your opponent say for five shoot them for five and suddenly they've taken 10 damage out of nowhere um, obviously this all deck centers around arcbound ravagers ability to throw around counters and then beyond that you are an Urza Saga deck, um, being able to take advantage of some of Urza Saga going on. And then you have some choice targets like Haywire Might to be able to disenchant things effectively. Shadow Spear as a way to race uh, aggressive decks while also giving some of your big idiots trample. Uh, Springleaf Drum as an additional way to get mana. Uh, the deck is mono green effectively with a little bit of a red splash to be able to activate the boss. And then so you obviously have access to Ink Moth Nexus, which can be a one-shot kill with Arcbound Ravager in a lot of situations, much like the old uh, Affinity decks. And then your sideboard, Chalice of the Voids, primarily here for the Cascade decks, Emrakul here for the Mill decks. Soulless Jailer is a little bit of a weirdly worded card, but effectively it's um, Graph Digger's Cage with a little bit better upside. Uh, permanent cards and graveyards, Canaan the Battlefield, shuts down Undying Effects, Living End, well, I guess it wouldn't technically shut down Living End in terms of this part of the ability, but players can't cast non-creature spells from Graveyards or Exile, meaning you can't cast from Cascade and can't cast from the Graveyard. <clears throat> Damping Spear, good against Tron, decent against Amulet. Uh, Relic of Pretendus, anti-Graveyard nonsense, along with Sol Solus Jailer. So, you know, good against uh, Merc Tide, good against Living End, etc. Uh, Pithing Needle. As you'll see in this video, helps to shut down problematic permanents of your opponents. You can man lands, planeswalkers, etc. Additional copy of Haywire Might, along with four copies of Force of Vigor. Normally, this would have been for things like the Mirror Match and Blood Moon, but with the huge rise of Omnath Bean, those are primarily targeted at those because if you can shut down the card advantage engines, well, they're significantly worse. And then two copies of Dismember when you need a little bit of a pinch of removal. Uh, this deck is one of the decks that's gotten a huge boost with Agatha, Agatha Soul Cauldron. Um, obviously, tossing around the ability to give, make all your creatures walking ballistas, <clears throat> um, hangerback walkers, arcbound ravagers, all that fun stuff. And then, you know, just the ability to kind of close out the game very quickly is what this deck excels at. Can do a lot of damage from a very small board state in one turn. And that is Hardened Scales. Let's get into the match. All right, quick match with... Uh, green hardened skills. Uh, this hand is fine. Not the most explosive. We don't have the Ozolith or our Soul Cauldron or any of that. But we do have Haywire Might into <clears throat> Ravager with either 
or possibly hanger back walker. Okay, opponent. So we got them off. Is, is do I just kill one of their mana dorks or do I try to get Ravager going? Trying to Hope they don't have anything big this turn. Big things being either Yogmoth or um, Grist. I guess to swing in here, which is fine. They still could easily have Yogmoth post combat, so. So a card they're most likely to have here is probably Bowmaster. So I'll just go Ballista and pass. Kind of leave this in this weird holding pattern. Okay, maybe they're not Yogg. This weird mutually assured destruction moment if somebody goes for something. Okay, this is probably not Yogg then. Maybe Planeswalkers of some type? Maybe Megita the Lion? Yeah, sure. I don't think you're winning the Exalted Race, so that's fine. Oh, I see. Mm-hmm. This was in fact. Sure. So we just play a hanger back walker. Now I understand what's going on. It's like, wait a sec, this deck isn't doing anything. Now I understand.
Once again, no particular reason to make a move, so. Seeds. So definitely don't want the dismembers. So their deck, they showed us both colors, or all three colors, so they're probably relying on both sets of mana dorks. Um, Blighted Agent, Glistener Elf, and Phyrexian Crusader, as well as potentially Ink Moth Nexus. So, <clears throat> Chalice is a consideration because a lot of their deck is on one. Although we do have a good bit of one drops as well. Um, so these four cards are the cards that might want. Pithing Needle could also be fine against specifically Ink Moth Nexus, shutting that down. Solar Jailer doesn't do much. Damping Sphere middling force of vigor only really good against potentially spell skite and ink mod nexus not an emerical matchup so we go here shiva a boz maybe shiva cauldron because maybe they'll go in on graveyard hate who knows with uh Leave the gemstone caverns in. <clears throat> Tomaton's okay, not specifically great in this matchup. Like it'll grow decent size, but if their deck's doing what should be doing, then most of what they're doing is going to be infect based and that doesn't necessarily perform well with plus one plus one counters all right so this hand do turn one besage you turn two versus saga yeah sands a little bit slow but <clears throat> okay so I do have the ink moth. Not that we're surprised there. Looking for another land drop. Don't hit a land drop, but we do hit a pithing needle. So, all right, and pass. Now has to reevaluate their game plan on the basis of Pithing Needle. Okay. So. Really need to draw land. Mm-hmm. Sure. Well, it does nothing, okay. Bait with hardened scales. They may have spell pierce up here, which is kind of annoying. But okay. Ink, moth, nexus. Or 
bunch of hasty threats in their deck, so we're fine doing that. Uh, we'll probably go get um, so I think we get spring leaf drum here do that play automaton <clears throat> Another automaton. All right. And opponent scoops. So nice to win a match against what could be a little bit tricky. Um, if they have, like, turn two Blighted Agent into, like, unload their hand, could be very difficult to deal with. Um, but it didn't appear that our opponent had all that functional draws, or they were heavily reliant on this Ink Moth Nexus, and Pithing Eagle just kind of shut everything down for them. So, anyways, that's it for this match. Don't forget to come back tomorrow for our next video.